said to preach something else and then the Lord answered some questions and this is what he has James chapter 1 I'm going to read verse 22 through 25 and on mine it says it's a test for obedience it says but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You know what? I'm going to read before that. I'll start over. Let's see. I'm going to read verse 19. <clears throat> I'll start with verse 19. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. See? We need to be quick to hear. Swift, it says. Swift to hear and slow to speak. Yes. And slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. See, we need to receive the word of God with meekness. Yes. This engrafted word. Um, it's engrafted. Why is it engrafted? Because uh, the Lord took it and plucked it into us. Uh, mm -hmm. He put his word in our hearts. Yes, amen. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. See? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that I have to stand before your people and to teach and to preach what you put in my heart. Jesus, let these words not return back empty, Lord. Let them go and do what they're supposed to do in the name of Jesus. Have your way in this service, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. Give me the words that I need to say, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Back them up by your word and by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Bless all those that are here, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And those that couldn't be here, Lord, make a way for them to be here next time. In Jesus' name, bring healing to their bodies. Make them whole right now, Jesus. And receive the honor and the glory, Jesus. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. That he tells us what we need to hear. And sometimes what we need to hear, we need to hear again. We need to hear again and again and again. Why? Because we... We hear the word, but we don't do it. Amen. Here it says, being a forgetful hearer. See? Yeah. We were a forgetful hearer. Amen. We forget what we just heard. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't 
take what we heard and practice it. That's right. Why? Somebody said at work, you know what? When you're we're at work and somebody said this that you need to stop talking. Mm -hmm. Stop chewing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because when your mouth is going, your ears mm -hmm. your ears close. Yeah. Your ears shut. Because you're too busy talking and you're not listening. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Word of God keeps being preached over and over and over again. That's right. Somebody said that <clears throat> using the women get preached about how to dress, how to dress all the time. Mm -hmm. They hear it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Mm -hmm. Why do they get, keep hearing it over and over again? Huh? Why? Why people say, "Oh, you beat"? It's like you're beating a dead horse. Mm -hmm. It's like you're beating a dead horse. You keep telling them over and over and over again. Well, maybe if you listen and obey, Amen. if you listen and hear the word of God, you know, and do it, do it, be a doer, yes. not just hear it. Right. You heard it over and over again, but you don't do it. That's why it keeps being preached over and over again. Yeah. Because you don't do what is being taught. That's right. You don't do because you're busy writing, you're busy talking, you're busy doing this and that, and you ain't listening to That's a right. word being said. That's right, amen. That's why it's being preached over and over and over again. Right. Um, last week I preached what I preached. I preached about the hair being your glory. And afterward, what did I hear? I heard that, that I know what I said. And I thought, truly they didn't get the context. Because I didn't, I said that long hair, anything over a half inch would be long then, right? And you said, then the men should walk around bald. Mm. The men should be bald. Mm. Huh? Mm. Well, if you read the story and you listen to the Word of God, the men's hair didn't even come up till verse 14. Mm. It didn't even come up till verse 14. Amen. When it talked about men having long hair, it didn't even come up till verse 14. So what was it talking about all those other verses? All those other verses talked about the women and their hair. Or the women and their covering. Yeah. Not their personal covering. Not their own covering. Which is a glory to them. Yeah. See, that in their glory and the shame of the man being having long hair didn't even come up till verse 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Everything before that, it's about the authority of, of, of honoring and or dishonoring your head. See? Amen. When a woman has long hair, that, you know what, I'm going to just go back to. I don't want to chop it all up because I want you to understand. I want you to understand because I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to be a forgetful here. Amen. Because the Lord doesn't want you to forget. <clears throat> he wants you to get it. Amen. Okay. And when you get it, it's because you put everything aside. You put everything aside, all your paperwork, your homework, your this, your that, and you put it away and you got your ears open. Amen. Okay. And you think that I don't preach to the men of how they should dress. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to all that. Okay, I'm going to get to it all because that's what the Lord wants. It's not that I don't preach to the men and how they need to dress. Uh, it's because at the time, that's what the Lord wants. You mentioned the dress, but nobody was here to receive it. Huh? You were you mentioned the dress of the man, but where were they? 
So the Lord addresses what he addresses when you're here. Amen. When you're here, preaching is for you because you're here. That's right, amen. Not when you're not here. That's right. Not when you heard it from someone else. Hey, tell me what the preaching was last week. Mm. It wasn't for you. You weren't in it. Mm. You weren't in church. You weren't in church. Amen. It's for those that are present. Yes. It's for those that are present. Yes. The word of God is. So, <clears throat> it says here, but I would, in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head. See, it's about authority. That's about authority. These verses here are about authority. Amen. The hair length for your glory, the man's glory, Amen. it's in verses 14 and 15 for your personal glory. 14 and 15. Amen. Everything else before that, it's, it's about authority. <coughs> Verse Five or verse four, I'll read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. See? Mm -hmm. If a woman prays with her head uncovered, it's like it's even. It says, for the for that is even. What's even? It's the same. As if she were shaven. So if a woman prays with her head uncovered, it's like having a shaved head. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. See? If the woman be not covered, let her cut her hair. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. See? Mm -hmm. Let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Amen. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. So it's talking about authority, dishonoring your head. Mm -hmm. Dishonor your head. As if the woman, it's a, if she prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, she dishonors her head. Yeah. It's the same as being shorn or shaven. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so it mentions shorn or shaven here in this. Okay. Shorn or shaven. If you don't cover your head, it's like if you have a, your hair cut or a shaved head. So when you get up to verse 14, now it's talking about your own covering, the man's own covering. He says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? See? It's a shame unto him if I have long hair. If I have long hair, it's a shame unto me. See? See? It's a shame unto me if I have long hair. I don't shame the Lord. I shame myself if I have long hair. Amen. See? It's a different covering. <clears throat> but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. It's her glory if she has long hair. Amen. For her hair is given her for a covering. Yeah. For her glory, for her honor. Yes. And I men I also mentioned in Spanish, right? <clears throat> because we did it in Spanish. That I entitled it in Spanish. In First Corinthians eleven, and I'll read it in Spanish. Because it said we read it in English, right? Where it says 
for her long hair is for her glory. Mm -hmm. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. If a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. <clears throat> so, okay. But if you don't have long hair, what if the woman don't have long hair? You know there's people, there's women that don't have long hair? Mm -hmm. There is. Mm -hmm. Right? We know of some. Mm -hmm. Right? We know of some women that have long hair or that don't have long hair. <coughs> is it, then if it's not long hair, is it still not her glory? Because it's not long? Is her hair not lo that isn't long, is it her glory or not? Huh? Is it not her glory? It's still her glory. It's still her glory. If you go back to what it said, shorn or shaven is a dishonor. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. See, dishonor brings dishonor. For that is, it's the same as if she were shaven. See? So if having short hair or shaved hair is a dishonor, okay, it's a dishonor, right? Then having, if shorn cut hair or bald is a dishonor then when I said about anything over bald is would be considered long it, uh, because when you think about it in Spanish it says this in Spanish it says radio on the contrary La mujer, the woman, dejarse crecer el cabello, letting her hair grow, le es honroso. It's an honor to let your hair grow, it says. It's an honor to let your hair grow. See? So what happens if you don't let it grow? And you cut it. It's the same thing, right? That I just said in verse 5. It's a dishonor, right? It's a dishonor. So it's a dishonor to not let your hair grow. Okay? So that's why I said anything over bond is an honor. As long as you don't cut your hair. Yes. As long as you don't cut your hair, it's an honor. Because you're letting your hair grow. Right. And how long is between you and God? It says, however long it grows. That's right. However long it grows. I was going to say something about the hair, but people might get offended. I won't say it. I won't say it because you'll think I'm racist. I'll say you're racist. But no, you know what I'm talking about. Some people... Some people's hair don't grow like others. Mm -hmm. Some races, their race, for whatever reason, their hair doesn't grow as long. That's right, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Didn't we have one at the other place? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long was her hair? It wasn't long, but was it an honor? It was, it, was it her glory? Yes, it was. It was her glory and not being long. That's right. Right? What's a glory, what's an honor is that she don't cut it. That's She's right. letting her hair grow. Amen. Whether, how, how, however long it gets. That's right. It's an honor. Yes, it is. And if shorn or shaven head is a dishonor, that's why I said it's an honor. Amen. It's an honor. <clears throat> and anything over bald is an honor. It's, it's good. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. However long it is, 
if it's a half inch, quarter inch, whatever it is, however long their hair gets, it's still an honor yes, it because is. they don't, they're not cutting it. Amen. It's, it's an honor. Amen. That's why this is correct. Yes. In Spanish, it is correct yes. because to let your hair grow is an honor. Amen. The other way, you have to define what long hair is. What is long hair? Huh? Mm -hmm. Your long hair might be longer than her long hair. Mm -hmm. Is it then her hair not a glory to her? Mm. Mm -hmm. Apples and oranges, right? Mm -hmm. Comparing apples and oranges or whatever, however you want to call it. No. Mm -hmm. Letting your hair grow. The day you get converted to the Lord... Is the day you stop cutting your hair. That's right. Or the, let's put it this way, the day you make up your mind that, yes. like we, this morning's lesson, you had an aha moment. Mm -hmm. You had an aha moment. Yes. The Lord opened your eyes, gave you the understanding, and you said, you know what? It is an honor. Yes, it it is. is an honor to let my hair grow, and from this day forward, I ain't going to cut it anymore. That's right, man. It's yes. an honor. Yes, and you man. had that aha moment. Mm -hmm. You had that moment where the Lord just touched your heart, your mind, and mm -hmm. you said from this day forward, it's an honor yes. to let my hair grow from this day forward. From this day forward, the barber ain't going to see my hair anymore. Amen. Not even to wash it, I could wash my own hair. Amen. Uh, from this day forward. Amen. See, that, that is the context that I had where anything over bald, in half inch or whatever, is an honor to glory. Okay? Mm -hmm. For the women, for the women, remember, it's the women's hair. What about the men? If they had bald hair. Well, first they have to ask themselves why they bald their themselves. Mm -hmm. They have to ask themselves why. Mm -hmm. Oh, brother, I had piojos. <laughs> okay, well. I had piojos, get rid of them. Huh? But you have to ask yourself why. Why are you cutting your bald head? Hmm? The Bible says, for a man to have long hair, it's a dishonor to him. He dishonors himself. Okay. So we need to be hearers of the word. Yes. And doers. We need to be doers of the word. Yes. Not just hearers only. Because everybody hears the same thing. Everybody hears the same thing. But it's in the doing. Huh? It's in the doing. You young kids... Young people, you, how, how many times have you heard about the sleeves? How many times have you heard about the sleeves? Being the late, long sleeves, that you're supposed to wear long sleeves. Uh, young people, young kids, how long have you heard it? Amen. You heard it forever, Amen. right? So then why don't you obey it? Amen. Why don't you obey it? Huh? You hear, you hear it over and over and over. You hear it over and over and over. Hmm. Oh, but the Lord gave you the Holy Ghost because you can obey. And you might say, oh, but you know, they're young people. They don't obey. They, they, how can they obey? Okay, so then you, you admit it's not the young people's problem. It's not them. It's not their fault they don't dress with long sleeves. It's your fault. Mm -hmm. It's your fault as parents that they don't dress with long sleeves. Mm -hmm. huh? You don't buy them the long sleeves or whatever reason. For whatever reason, the parent said it's her fault, their fault, that their young kids don't wear it. Because you bought it. You bought them the short sleeves. They just wear what you bought them. 
right? Yeah. You bought them the short sleeves so they can wear them. That's why they don't wear them. You're right. The kids, they're, they're, they're just do what they're told. Right. Huh? The Lord gave them the Holy Ghost. They can lose out. They can lose out on their souls. Yes. And yes. not being their fault. Being your fault because you didn't dress them right. right you still have that opportunity to dress them, to tell them, encourage them, hey, this is how you dress. Yes. You're a child of God now. The Lord dressed Adam and Eve with coats. Yes. The Lord put long sleeves on Adam and Eve. Yes. He did. Yes, yes, yes. And tries to put it on you but you fight it That's right. because you're a forgetful hearer Amen. you're a forgetful hearer you hear the word hear the word you get it stomped and whatever all over you and like kicking the dead horse and but you don't obey it That's right. you heard it you hear it over and over again but you don't obey it Amen. so what's the problem it's in the doing it's in the doing of the word. Yes. That's the problem. You hear it over and over. The women hear it over and over. The dress. The length. Yes. But they don't obey. That's right. The nails. Mm -hmm. The nail polish. Right? Mm -hmm. You hear it over and over. The makeup. You hear it over and over. But you don't obey. Mm -hmm. It's in the hearing and the doing. Yes. You hear it over and over and over again. That's not the problem. It's in where the problem, where we got a heart condition. That's right. We have a heart condition. Yeah. And it's in the obeying. Yeah. We need to have a change of attitude, a change of heart, a change of soil. Put some dung on it. Put some dung on that oil, or in that soil. Yes. Fertilize it. Yes. Fertilize that soil. Amen. So that it finally sticks. You're finally starting to sprout that good fruit. Yes, man. Mm. Dung it. Hallelujah. Uh, that's what the Word of God says. Dung it. what the man of God said Lord I know you want to get rid of this tree but let me take care of this tree let me take care of this tree let me dung it mm -hmm. let me nourish it let me do what I need to do to see if it will start producing good fruit yes. See, so it's not the hearing because everybody hears yes. even the, the little ones yes they do even they hear it. Yeah. See, little ones, you need to hear it. You need to put those crayons away and listen. That's right. Put the crayons away. Put 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 all that away. Yeah. And listen to the word. Yes. And be a doer, so that when your mama, your daddy wants to put those sleeves on you, say no. I'm a child of God, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna dress with long sleeves. That's right, Amen. Yeah. Because that's who I am. Yes, amen. I'm a child of God. Yes, amen. I'm not wishy-washy, rubber backbone. That's right. I'm going to grow up to be a godly man of God. Yes, amen. A godly woman yes. of God. Hallelujah. That's going to do what the Bible says. Yes, thank you. Be Lord. faithful to yourself and to God. Amen. You're not going to be, oh, you never told me. I never knew. I never knew that sleeping around wasn't right. Mm -hmm. huh? I never knew that. Mm -hmm. You never told me. No, you were in church forever. You grew up in the church and no one told you. Mm -hmm. You were just too busy writing, mm -hmm. jaw, ja jaw yapping and whatever and closed your ears to the Word of God That's right. when it was being preached at. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh? So you became a, you did what you did. Hmm? You never knew. Well, I'm reminding you. I'm reminding you because.
because you said you never knew. Nobody told me. Mm -hmm. uh, you save yourselves for marriage, young people. That's right. Save yourselves for young, for right. young people. Save yourselves for marriage. Okay. You never heard it. You're hearing it now. Amen. So you can't say later on when you're in sin, caught up in the moment. You can't say, nobody told me. Nobody told me to save myself for my husband. Huh? Mm -hmm. Nobody told me. No, they just tried telling you you were you just weren't listening. That's right, man. You wanted to do your own thing because you were rebellious. Yeah. You're being rebellious. You wanted to move out on your own for for those reasons. Mm -hmm. Rebelliousness. Bible says it's as the wind, sin of witchcraft. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to be that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be obedient to the word of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Matthew 13. So we need to let us not be a forgetful here. Don't forget, don't forget what you heard. Like, like people have said, don't be talking, writing, listening. Because when you're talking, they say with these clothes, your ears closed because you're not listening. Yeah. Your ears closed because your jaw's going and your ears are shut. Yeah. Mm. Too busy talking about what's for dinner, what's for lunch. What are we going to eat after? Mm. Well, eat the Word of God first. That's right, amen. Eat the Word of God and then, then worry about what you're going to eat later. Chew on the Word of God first. Chew on the Word of God. Life is fragile. Yes, it is. Life is fragile. You could be choking. You could choke on your food. Huh? You can choke on your food. Huh? I remember coming out of work one day and walking in the parking. I was working downtown. Got off the elevator in the parking lot. I was parking at the convention center. Got out of the parking, took a drink of water. One drink of water. And I started like if I was drowning. I was choking on that drink of water. Like drowning. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen. You're not promised tomorrow. That's right, yeah. You're not promised tomorrow. Huh? I preached the other day about the signs, the signs of wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. And where 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 does this world find themselves? Isn't there a war already? There's a war right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And with the help of the Lord, the, the United States will stay out of it. Because mm. then what? Mm -hmm. Then war comes home. Mm. War comes home. Mm. It doesn't take much. Mm. We wouldn't even know. Something coming overhead. You wouldn't even know it. That's tomorrow. We need to get right with the Lord today. That's today, right. if you hear His word, harden not your heart. See? Yes. Hear His word, harden not your heart. You hear it, and you do it. You don't do it, right? You don't harden your heart. Because you heard it, and you do 
you're a hearer and you're a doer. Right? You hear his word and you're a doer. You're not going to harden your heart. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Here we are. Uh, talking about the parable of the sower and the soils. The same day, Matthew 13, 1, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up, and some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell upon, fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundred, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. See? You got ears to hear? Then hear. But don't just hear, because everybody does. Everybody hears. But not everybody does. Hmm? Not everybody does. Which reminded me. Which reminded me. How many plumbers do we have here? Huh? Do we have any plumbers? Uh, no plumbers. You sure? Are you sure you don't? You're not a plumber. No. Okay. No plumbers. Okay. So then, if there were plumbers, the Lord would have to tie you to dress right, right? Okay. There's no plumbers. Okay. So so if there's no plumbers then keep your nakedness to yourself. If there's no plumbers, dress right. You don't have an excuse. Cuz you're not a plumber. You're you're without excuse. Cuz you're not a plumber. Right? You said you're not a plumber. So dress right. Long shirts tucked in. Right? Because no one's a plumber. So we dress right. We dress right. We're not plumbers. We're not what we used to be. Right? We're not what we used to be. So we dress right. You have heard it before about the how long should your collar shirts be around the collar? How long should they be? You heard it before? You heard that these two bones right here, collar bones, that should be the the that should be the the ring around your neck, your neck, the ring around your shirt should go that long, that far. Huh? You've heard that before, right? Yes. See? It's not in the hearing because you've heard it before. It's in the doing then. Why don't you do it? Right? Because you've heard it before. You have heard it before. Um, 
when you dress that way, then you don't have to worry about showing your your cleavage, right? Either one. We said no one's a plumber, right? So they're not showing their cleavage either, right? So we dress right, even up here, even the collarbone. The Lord, the Lord, He gives the answers. He gives the answers. We, we don't wear clingy clothes, tight clothes, right? Why? Because it's lasciviousness. It's a work of the flesh. It's in Galatians chapter 5. We had a visitor come the other week, last week. And he asked, what is this? What is that? What's that word right there? Even they wonder, what, what is that word? See? And I just told them. It's when a man or a woman dresses to impress the opposite sex. Either you dress or you act in a way to entice the opposite sex. That's lasciviousness. Oh, you just wear the sleeves because it's your conviction or this, this, and that. No, it's it's in the Word of God. It's in the Word of God. Okay, it's it's lasciviousness. Okay, some things. You know, um, we're not the smartest, right? Well, I, 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 I say I'm not the smartest, but you know what? There's tools that we can use. One of those tools is a dictionary. You can look up the word just as I can, just as well as I can. And some words, they're defined. They're defined by the word of God. Just like we earlier. What is the definition of long hair? Well, Webster's Dictionary said long is long, right? Maybe, I don't know. I didn't look it up. But what does the Bible say long hair is? The definition in the Word of God is in verse uncut hair. Huh? It's found in verse 5. Where is this 6? Five and six, where it says, or as if she were shaven. Is is the shaved hair long? No. Cut hair is that long? No. So then, what is long hair? It's uncut hair, right? That you get on, you get the length of the hair right there in that definition. It's uncut hair. Uncut or shorn, shorn or uncut hair. That's the definition of long. See? You find the definition in the Word of God. Or you get your, you use that in the dictionary. So that's what we do. It's, it's in the Word of God. So, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. We all have hear, ears, right? Yes. Some may not have hands. We read in earlier, they have leprosy, right? Mm -hmm. Some have leprosy, they, they don't have he hands. Some don't have hands. Some don't have fingers. But you all have ears. You all have hands. Uh, you just need the the intestinal fortitude, the guts, the ganas, somebody said, ganas. You know what ganas are? It's in Spanish. You need to want to. You need the want to want to. 
you need to have that mentality that I want to do it. I'm gonna do it. See, the gonna do it. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. See, you, you understand the parable? Does anybody not understand? See, it's not a, it's not a secret. Uh, it's not a secret to where only some understand. You gotta have, you gotta be special to understand the Word of God. No, oh, you have what it takes. That's right. You have what it takes. The Word of God is anointed. Yes, it is. For whomsoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. See? Hearing, they hear not. See? Everybody hears, but they hear not. In hearing, they hear not. I'll read it again. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. See? Everybody's hearing this, but they're hearing not. Why? Because they're busy somewhere else. See? Neither do they understand. How could they? They didn't hear what, was, what they heard. They heard something else. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. See? That said a whole mouthful. Yes, amen. That said a whole mouthful. And somebody said, where you hear and you need to hear and and understand. Make up your mind that you're gonna understand. Yeah. Sure. We need to be good hearers. We need to be good hearers so that we can be good doers. Yes. Yeah. I, I've asked the Lord a long time ago that to teach me His Word. Teach me Your Word, Lord so that I can practice your word and so I can teach it. Amen. And that's what we need to do. We need to not just be hearers of the word, but doers. You need to be a doer of the word. Amen. We need to be doers, we need to obey. Obey, it's in our obedience that the blessings come. Amen. The Lord wants to bless you. Yes. He wants to bless you, but you need to be a, a doer of the word so that he can bless you. You ain't going to bless those that are disobedient, are you? Oh, yeah, I am. I am on the U.S. government. And I bless, I bless them all. I'm the U.S. government. I can bless them. You're not working, no, no problem. Here's the money, go. No. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't need. Right? If you don't work, you don't need. You got to get up and you got to work. You got to work. 
Well, you gotta work. Ain't nothing free. Ain't nothing free. You gotta work at it. You gotta work for it. That's old school. That's old school. You gotta work. What are you talking about? Still getting them money, putting the checks. Oh. I ain't. I still gotta work. Still gotta get up early in the morning, drive an hour, drive an hour at least to get to work, or longer, depending on the weather. So we need to be hearers of the word yes. and doers yes. and to hear it and do it. Yes. Yes. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. See? You can't even say you're deaf. You can't even say you're deaf. You might say you got selective hearing but you can't say you're deaf. Only hear what you want to hear. Or hear the word of God and do it. Because yes, yeah. what if you didn't have hearing? You wish you did. That's right. you, wish, you wish you did. Yes, amen. Might as well be deaf, right? You don't want to hear it, you don't want to obey it. Then you don't need those ears. Huh? You don't need those ears. No, you need to appreciate what you have. That's right, yeah. Appreciate that you can hear. Yes, yeah. Appreciate that you can see. Yes, yeah. Appreciate it. Yes. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard heard them. See? You're blessed. Yes, yeah. You're blessed to hear the things of God that That's you right. hear. That's right. Amen. Because some, some don't hear it. Some get their ears tickled. Huh? Some get their ears tickled. Maybe you like that. Or maybe you would like that. Get your ears tickled. Huh? Why? Why? Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Hear it now. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. The wicked one and catcheth it away. Mm. Why why are you gonna let the wicked one take it away, catch it away? Mm. The Bible says to let no man take your crown. That's right. Including the wicked one. That's Don't right. let the wicked one come and I got it. Huh? Mm -hmm. You don't let anyone take anything. You go to the ball game and you see a ball coming your way and you're right there. Well, I'm gonna get this one and you're ready to catch it. Mm -hmm. huh? Don't let anyone take it. You got it. Mm -hmm. Get it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. Let no man take your blessing, That's your right. crown. Mm -hmm. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and anon, with joy receiveth it. And I forgot what that word anon. Oh, it's immediately anon. And immediately with joy receive it. See? But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and immediately with joy receiveth it. You receive it with joy. Yet hath he not root in himself, but it, but in, but dureth. In other words, he endureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution ariseth, 
because of the word. By and by, he is offended. See? You get offended at the word of God. You get offended at the preaching of the word of God. Here he goes again, preaching to us women. I can't wear my shorts. I can't do this and that. Over and over and over again. Over and over again. Over, over. Preaching to the women. Preach to the men, brother. Preach to the men. I did. We said you said you, there was no plumbers here. You said there was no plumbers, right? No plumbers cracks, right? No plumbers. No plumbers. Huh? Wear your clothes the right length, the right size. Huh? Make some extra money, buy you some bigger clothes. Mm -hmm. The next size. Remember the next size. Then when you lose the weight, then you can go back to the other size. Okay. If you lose weight. If not, just keep getting them bigger and bigger. Huh? Don't. Don't wear the small size. Wear the right size. Because here it says, because of the word, by and by he is offended. The Bible says, great peace have they that love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. You love the word of God, you ain't going to be offended. That's right, amen. Oh, but, uh, I love the word of God, but the, it's you. You're the one telling us. Now I'm just telling you what the word of God says. Right, amen. Mm -hmm. right. Don't be offended. Right, we don't uh, get offended at the word of God. Yes, amen. Remember, I'll read it again. It's the word of God that's going to save you. Where was it at in James chapter 1? James chapter 1, verse 21 says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls amen. see this word of god in, can save our souls yes amen. that's the word of god yes. don't be offended at, at what's going to save your soul that's right amen. don't get offended at what's going to save your soul amen. so he that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. You become unfruitful when you're too busy trying to make these riches and millions. And, no, don't. Don't worry about that. Just as long as you have enough. Mm -hmm. As long as the Lord provides. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about making millions. Mm -hmm. Just do your job. And if it happens, it happens, right? Yes. Yeah. Some of the richest people were the people of God. Yeah. He was a Solomon. Mm -hmm. He was the richest man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They were well off. Abraham was well off. So, but he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. See? So be that good soil. Have that good soil. Have good soil to receive the word of God. So 
so that when you hear it, you do it. You obey it. Okay? A lot of you knew this parable. You know this parable. But if you obey it, or just hear it, if you just hear it, we need to obey. We need to obey. Obey the word of God. Because we're without excuse. Little ones, you're without excuse. If you have the Holy Ghost, you're without excuse. Because you can, like I said earlier, you can tell your parents to dress you right. And wear long sleeves. When I came to the Lord, um, I was what, 18, maybe 19? <clears throat> 18. I was 18. So I was converted in July. I would have been 19 in September. So I came to the Lord at 18, and I remember driving to school or the church, mm -hmm. Sunday school. <coughs> and here next to me, driving also, was a young man, Roly, Rolando, driving himself to, to church. Yeah. Uh, he was driving himself to church. Yeah. No, but you, you can't drive. No, you can't drive. You can't drive, but you can, you can say. You can say, hey, you need to dress me right. I'm an apostolic Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. You can, and then when you're old enough to drive, you can drive yourself to church, right? And the parents can't go for whatever reason. Uh, you can drive yourself to church. And make that commitment to to serve the Lord. The Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We need to work out our own salvation. Young people, you can do it. You can do it. You can grow up serving the Lord. Okay? Being faithful. So that's all that I have. Just be a doer. Don't complain because you hear the word of God over and over. Don't complain because the preaching's this and that. Well, when, when you finally get it, the preaching will stop and you, the Lord will give more preaching. The Lord will say, okay, it's time to leave that subject alone. Let's go on to this other subject. Because they grew, they grew in that area. They matured. They matured in that area. Now let's go here. Let's move on to this. And then when new converts come and they need to hear that, then we'll preach that. Yes. Um, that's what the Word of God says. Yes. That's what it says. It's, it's maturing. Maturing. You leave the, the elementary things and you move on. You grow. Yes. You grow in the Word. Bible says, you that have been in this long enough, you should have been teachers by now. You've been in this long enough, you should have been teaching, but yet you still have need to be taught. And that, the very principle, the elementary things, the laying on of hands and baptisms, and you need to be taught again, but that's okay. So see, we'll get back to those things again, the things you complained about. But in time, because you would have matured. You would have matured and who knows, maybe you'll be teaching these lessons. That's right. Not in a preaching, but in a teaching, yeah. in a class. In a class to the women or yeah. to young people. That's what the Bible says. It says older women teach the younger women. 
older men teach the younger men. See? Because you grew, you matured. You're not a young whippersnapper like you used to be. And I'm speaking to myself. Because that's what I was. But we grow, we grow, we mature. We're not those things anymore. When I was a child, I speak as a child. But then I grew up and I put away those childish things. You put those things away because you're all grown up. You got a family, you got to work to support, you got a kid to come in or whatever. And you, you grow up, you put away those childish things. You put them away and then you grow up. The cycle of life begins again, over again. The cycle of life. Come to the altar. Come.